Regarding the flaps in the F5, they're electrically controlled and powered, and you have a leading edge flap and a trailing edge flap in each wing. They're the flaps in the up position, but if we extend them down to full, this means that the leading edge flap is going to be at 24 degrees, and the trailing edge flap is going to be at 20 degrees. There are two ways to control your flaps. The first is using the thumb switch, and there's three settings. The up setting is going to be fully retracted, and the fixed setting you'll use to maximize your endurance if you're flying at a reduced airspeed, and the auto setting you'll generally use in all phases of flight except for en route cruise to avoid excessive fuel consumption. The flat positions when using fixed or auto, they're going to rely on signals from the angle of attack switching unit and the central air data computer. The second way you can control the flaps is using the flap lever on the throttle quadrant. Three positions to this, you got emergency up, which is just going to bring it up. There's the thumb switch, which lets you control the flaps using the thumb switch on the throttle we talked about earlier. And then there's the full position, which is going to extend the flaps fully. Now the flap lever will override the thumb switch setting when you set it to the emergency up or full position. So this comes in handy when you have a flap failure of some sort. So in this video, we're going to look at a no flap landing. And uh, these are what you're going to practice. Uh, so you're able to perform on when you need to, if you had an emergency situation. Um, this could happen if you had, say, a flap failure, a flap asymmetry, where one side of flaps is deployed while the other is retracted. Well, we had an electrical failure, uh, since the flaps are electrically controlled and you wouldn't be able to extend them. And like I mentioned earlier, if you had that angle of attack switching unit or computer failure, uh, you can still perform a normal full flap landing shown in the previous video, uh, but you use the flap lever to override a possible malfunction of the flaps position. So now I'm going to demo a no flaps approach in the F5, and the first step is going to be calculating our approach speed. So to do that, we need to look at our fuel state because the approach speed is dependent on the aircraft weight. So checking our fuel, we have a thousand pounds in the left system and a thousand pounds in the right system to give us a total of two thousand pounds of fuel. So putting this weight into the approach speed formula and then adding 10 knots because we're using a no flap approach, so give us an approach speed of 165 knots. So whenever you're flying a no flaps approach, you need to remember to fly faster because you're not getting that increase in lift when the flaps are extended. So this means you're going to have to fly the approach at a faster rest speed and a higher angle of attack. Then in the case of the F5, the angle of attack is going to be 16.4 uh, units of AOA. Now when you're making approaches uh, using no flaps, generally speaking you'll want to use a straight in approach so you can have a nice stable approach to the runway. Um, in this example though, we're going to do another uh, initial and pitch with the brake over the runway and that way we can just look at how it needs to change uh, by the, the lack of having flaps available. So from here we can go through the beginning of our landing flow, the altimeter is set, we're going to level off at 3,300 feet, we're going to discontinue any cross feeding, hydraulic pressures are fine, airspeed is around 300 knots um, and the flaps are up and uh, if you had to you would use the flap lever to the up position and that way you can ensure that you're not going to get any unwanted flat positions. Now although you didn't see it, I already called inbound previously. That's where we get that message around 5 miles telling us to contact the tower on our approach. Um, so we can bring up the comm menu using the microphone button. And uh, then we can request a landing. Springfield 1-1, one, one. request landing. So now that we've been given permission to land, we can turn the landing light on to reflect that. And we'll offset our view to the left, that way we can have the same break point as the last video, which is that darker region near the control tower. Now because this break is performed without using flaps, um, we're going to have to have a wider downwind. So this means in our initial break, we're going to be pulling about 2 to 2.5G two instead of 3G. So as we come up on our break point here, we're going to keep our thrust in the same position, roll into the brake, and begin our pull. Trying to maintain that about 2.5G or so. This way we're increasing our turn radius. And this will help us um, generate that larger spacing that we need on downwind.
As we slow through 250 knots, the auxiliary doors are now open. We can get the wings level, extend the landing gear and check our downwind spacing. So for our altitude, we're going to have a spacing of around about one and a half miles. And we need this extra spacing because our airspeed in the final turn is going to be faster, which will give us an increase in turn radius. And this also means that we need to turn a little bit earlier than that usual 45 degree point. So as we begin this final turn, we'll increase our thrust and adjust our pitch to be on speed, descending around 2,000 feet a minute. Your airspeed in this final turn is going to be dependent on your weight, just like the final approach speed. And you are going to experience some buffet in this turn if you're doing it right. But you don't want excessive amounts of buffet, or you could be at risk of stalling. So as we start finishing off this turn, we want to roll our wings level between 1 to 1.3 nautical miles away at around 300 feet AGL. And as we start rolling wings level, we're going to need to reduce our thrust. That way we can get our airspeed down to 165 knots. So on short final, gear down as three green flaps are up, flying towards my aiming point at the beginning of the runway, while maintaining the on-speed condition at 165 knots. As we approach the aiming point, we'll start reducing the thrust back to idle and bringing it up into the flare. Then when you touch down, you can hold the nose up for aero braking, or you can let the nose come down, and then you can start applying manual braking. Uh, the other option, of course, is to use that drag chute if you wanted to use that. Just remember that we don't have any skid in the F5 from the other video, so you need to be careful with your brake application. Now on this approach, I landed 500 foot longer than I intended to, and that was because um, I didn't reduce the power early enough. So remember that because you're flying a no-flaps approach, you're going to have a faster approach speed. So this means that you need to make an earlier power reduction in order to help bleed off that airspeed as you approach your touchdown zone. So I hope you learned something a little bit different here with a no-flap landing in the F5. If you happen to enjoy it, remember to use the like button or leave a comment if you have any feedback. Don't forget to be a subscriber as well so you can see new videos as they're released. And as always, don't forget to fly safe and check your six.